Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? All right, the Saints have officially introduced Dennis Allen as their new head coach. Our buddy Larry Holder of The Athletic, he was there, and he's going to have to join us for a couple of minutes. How are you, man? I'm good, Matthew. Sorry for the uh, mini delay. Just had to catch up with Dennis after the presser. But, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's kind of a surreal day that he's standing up there on the podium, and he is, uh, he's the head coach, and you're asking him about Alvin Kamara and arrest, and it's uh, – it's uh, it's a bizarre, but uh, but a day that uh, once this job came open, I figured would would be the case at some point. Yeah, he. Uh, we'll get to Kamara in a second. Let's start though. Um, I guess at the beginning, he was the odds-on favorite this entire time. So I'm guessing no surprise there. But just a general thought on the Saints hiring Dennis Allen. Look, I think it's a smart decision, and it's the right decision. And uh, it's something to where he knows the organization. Uh, they've known him for a long, long time. I know plenty enough people who kind of uh, aren't super thrilled with the hire, always point back to his time with the Raiders. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, and even something he even said after the, the, the press conference. He said, look, that's a first-year owner with a first-year GM with a first-year coach. And the pieces weren't there. Maybe he wasn't totally ready for it. But I think he's absolutely ready for it. I think he was groomed to become this uh, when uh, when Sean Payton brought him back in and saw the success he started having specifically back in 2017 when the defense really got on track. And I think uh, there's going to be some changes. Uh, and that, that's a, a little surprising, primarily on the offensive side. Uh, but still, uh, I think that this uh, is something that the Saints weren't looking to tear down anything. Uh, they want to keep this thing going, and they know uh, Dennis Allen, and I even feel myself that Dennis Allen certainly has the ability to keep the Saints team uh, in contention for a division and playoffs and, and everything that you're trying to achieve. You're not a bottom feeder. You're still in that hunt. Larry, you mentioned uh, DA's time as the uh, as the Raiders head coach, where he was 8-28. I mean, it was a failed tenure. There's no other way to say it. But aside from that, what are the biggest question marks – that this hire present for New Orleans? Well, I think in the sense that you're used to seeing this team as an offensive team, and he's not necessarily known as an offensive guy. And I'm curious to see what his philosophy is there. And I asked him a couple of questions about quarterback. Is there a style that he wants to go with? Uh, you know, is it, basically pocket passer or you, you want to adapt and uh, kind of go with more of a mold that uh, your quarterback is the more player and in, in you know they, we got plenty of examples of that now in the league and uh, you know he didn't really go into that so, so I think it's more of a mystery there how is he going to handle this thing offensively uh, just because uh, he is such a defensive guy to me it seems like he's going to be calling the plays on defense but uh, the offense was certainly a question. They know quarterback is a question, and how he goes about that, I think, is definitely uh, the number one issue for me because I think the defense is, is in good hands, and uh, yeah, that side of the ball, even coaching wise, I think will be more stable. I'm curious to see how he handles the offensive side. Do you have a thought on who they might target for each coordinator spot? Team that's being talked about, it was even brought up with me in a radio interview this morning by Charlie Weiss. Uh, was Eric Bieniemy, and I heard your uh, segment before. Once I got in the car, leaving the press conference, and you had brought that up, and people are wondering, man, they, he, they interviewed him for eight hours, and all of a sudden, you're getting news that his contract's up with the Chiefs. And so, if you're the Saints, why not throw uh, the open checkbook at him? Uh, because you might like the direction that he could take you, and so that to me, and that certainly sticks out there. Uh, but other than that, I, you know, it, it's hard to see because it's not like Dennis Allen has, has hired a bunch of offensive coaches. So it's kind of a little bit of that unknown there. Uh, but in terms of, say, defensive coordinator, I think the two names that are pretty obvious uh, that would be up for the job would be Chris Richard 
the uh, the secondary coach. And of course, he was with the Legion of Boom defense. And then Ryan Nielsen, who's the assistant head coach. And I remember doing a story on Ryan Nielsen during training camp, kind of as the next young up and coming coach. And Dennis, I, I interviewed him extensively for that story. And he had glowing praise about Ryan Nielsen and his potential of elevating and being a defensive coordinator. And uh, so those two names, uh, I'd be surprised if they went a different direction from either one of those names. What did you mention that you had a chance to speak to Dennis Allen after the press conference? Anything of note come out of that conversation? Well, outside of the Raiders thing, because that was brought up, like I asked about that and I've written about that. It's, you just seem like he has just a firm grasp of what he's getting into and like he's ready for it. It's weird because you have these introductory press conferences and usually someone in the media or anyone in the media, they don't know really the head coach. Like I've known Dennis Allen since 2006. So <laughs> it's, it's odd that, all right, hey, this is just Dennis. Like, and you, you know, I've had a chance to know him through being a secondary coach. And then uh, I was with him in Mobile at, uh, at a senior bowl when uh, he had gotten it. He just got up for the job for the Broncos defensive coordinator spot. And, like, I was out one of the nights when he was there and we congratulated. Like, you know, and you've been through these different scenarios and uh, it's, it's, it's different because you see, I feel like I know the guy and he knows, you know, the media, this, that, and the other. So it's, it's a totally different scenario. So it's not like I have to say, oh my gosh, Dennis Allen won the press conference. I'm like, well, this is like the, the hundredth time I've, I've heard Dennis Allen speak and you always kind of, want to hear what he has to say. So I think that you add all that up uh, in the familiarity and this, that, and the other. And to me, this makes the no-brainer head coaching higher. Now, if he goes one and four, mm -hmm. he knows that the tune might change. But uh, look, it's, uh, you know, but he, to, to me, uh, seems like the fit that makes the most sense. And that's what he said, that if he could have even imagined a job uh, as being a head coach, that the Saints, is the, it's the perfect fit. Uh, he wouldn't have pondered anything else uh, really in his coaching life uh, Larry Holder's our guest um I, I'm again I, I think most people understand why it makes so much sense so I'm sort of peeling back the onion to say okay what where might a blind spot be um just to sort of play devil's advocate right just ask the questions what about the the idea of like the substitute teacher right I mean it's is, is there potentially some some of that where maybe the discipline isn't as rigid because guys do know him so well and it is so familial. You would hope that they've built a culture and that he has built a culture and have built enough rapport enough that where that wouldn't happen. Uh, but that is something I'm sure he's going to have to take into account. Uh, that that could be something. And, you're of course, you're following the guy. And I will say something. <laughs> he did say, uh, he said he talked with Sean Payton uh, when he was on his way home from the office after – uh, Gail Benson just walks into his office and says, hey, you're going to be the next head coach. So uh, he, Sean calls him and he says, look, it's probably a little easier that you're, you're coming off of a 9-8 and eight season as opposed to 13-3 and three because, uh, you know, the expectations would be super high. Mm. Uh, and so if you finish 10-7, and seven, that's better than, uh, you know, having to deal with having to follow up a 9-8 and eight season. But you are following the, uh, you know, the, the, the legend basically, uh, of Sean Payton. I mean, he's won them a Super Bowl. And, you know, and you mentioned another blind spot, and this actually kind of goes back to probably Oakland. Uh, you know, he wasn't as involved in adding the pieces to the puzzle. Like, he was more cooking with the ingredients as opposed to picking out the ingredients as far as personnel. And that question was asked to Dennis during the press conference, and he says, oh, that he's going to be heavily involved. And Mickey was shaking his head uh, adamantly saying, yes, there's no doubt that Dennis is going to have a high, high uh, priority in terms of being able to pick the personnel. And that wasn't the case with him in Oakland. And I'm curious to see how he handled more responsibility with that uh, than he had in his previous head coaching spot. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.